Hey everybody, my name is Patrick Kolbeck. Welcome to episode two of the Mission Brief, featuring news by the numbers. What do we mean by news by the numbers? Well, most newscasts have an agenda. As a result, they select stories that fit the narrative of that agenda. We don't. Um, and so then you might ask, well, how do we select our stories then? Because there's a ton of information out there. Well, quite simply put, we do it by the numbers. Now, what numbers are those, you might ask? Well, that's where Nick Ruiz fits in. Nick is an expert in the field of data analytics. He has developed proprietary software that searches public data to highlight what topics are driving the culture in America. These topics are ranked by the numbers, and we use these rankings to drive the content of our weekly mission brief. So Nick, why don't you remind folks about exactly how your system works? All right, man, I figured it was so much fun. Let's do it again, man. We did it last week. We'll do it again this week. Uh, so for, for those of you that aren't familiar with what we do, first thing I'm going to say is I would encourage you to go to evolutionconsulting.world. We have um, a fairly detailed analysis or a fairly detailed synopsis of the three systems, proprietary uh, linguistic analysis systems that we built, developed, and ultimately use here at uh, Evolution Consulting. They go by the name of Evolution 4.0, Evolution Ultra, which is our current production version. And then more recently, as of early this year, 2020, we have Evolution Unlimited, okay? And so basically the way those systems are gonna work is we, I'll, I'll start off with what we don't do. We're not, uh, in terms of data collection and mining, what we're not doing is we're not in your, your emails, your text messages, your personal communications, your direct messages, anything that's, that's private stays private. Right. So what we're looking for is front facing web data, HTTP data. So anything that you may post on social media, a forum, um, anything that you may post in where you hit the button and out to the, the, the rest of the world or the digisphere it goes. OK, so we're able to collect that and push that through a series of algorithms that we have, excuse me, logarithmic uh, language analysis systems where we're able to actually take that information and either identify an existing trend in a direction that that trend is heading in or we're able to, in a lot of instances, discover trends that may not be evident at all, and we get to see the embryonic stage of that developing. So um, for purposes of, of our series here, so you see that variable after each one of yep. our subjects called LTA, and that stands for language to action, all right? Yep. So what that is, is that's a base seven scale, seven being the max that, that we're able to register with our system is how we designed it. Uh, and what it allows us to do is translate from language, what are we seeing on the internet, to the probability or intensity of action. What actions in the real world that we live in uh, are we likely to see as a result of this language on the internet? So that's what you see with uh, LTA, the higher the number, the more intense it is. So that's, that's how we're able to quite literally do news by the numbers here. Excellent. Well, I mean, we've seen at the, in the uh, intro on this particular mission brief, you've got three topics selected by the numbers uh, with their LTA ratings. So maybe you can walk people through what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so we have three here. There, uh, one of them, uh, I can honestly say, has not yet been mentioned, and I don't foresee it being mentioned in any mainstream media, and that's topic number three. But we'll start from the top, and that is uh, presidential debate 2020. We're calling it the death of the baby boomer worldview. Uh, and age jokes aside there, uh, there's a lot of linguistics showing that uh, we, have, uh, we have reached an inflection point in terms of American politics and the paradigm of the two-party system, and we're starting to see the beginning of the end of that now. So that's number one. Number two, we have the rise of technocratic policing, which is uh, effectively, in a 30-second in a version of it, uh, what we're talking about is the use of technology as an in addition to, or in many instances, an instead of conventional police work to certainly put um, an end to a lot of the civil unrest that we've seen in this country. And finally, speaking of civil unrest, that brings us to number three, uh, which is infighting between factions of the left, most notably those who identify as being part of the woke movement. We're talking about conflict between Antifa and the more revolutionary Marxist elements of that and BLM, Black Lives Matters which would be the more uh, racial civil rights oriented component of that movement. So we're starting to see okay. a little bit of brand conflict there. All right, well, let's peel back the onion layers and let's start off with uh, topic number one, that presidential debate and the end of my generation, the baby boomer worldview. 
<laughs> well, I'll, I'll preface this by saying all age jokes aside, because I'm only a couple of months away from uh, from being 40 myself here. But uh, you'll notice it's got a 4.55 LTA. So we're we're getting up there to where we would consider it um, likely to produce visible, tang tangible action in the real world in which we live. Uh, but what we saw with this debate and the entire process, not just this most recent debate, but this most recent debate underscored a lot of those points. But the entire Trump Hillary and now more recently Trump Biden component uh, of elected politics are what we're going to call peak baby boomer generation worldview, both the left and the right. The Democrat Party embodying everything that the baby boomer left leaning component of society represents in terms of character and content. And the same can be said on the right for Trump being representative of, of a conservative baby boomer generation product, you know, uh, chronological worldview. So what we're starting to see there is is really the peak of that. And I know OK Boomer has taken on a somewhat negative connotation on the Internet in terms of um, ageism or generally generationalism. That's not what we're doing here. What we're talking about now is the traditional components of both the left and the right starting to come under attack by younger folks that are going to be running for office, that are going to have their own agendas and that are going to have their own ideas uh, of how to do things. And the biggest component that we're seeing in terms of, of change forthcoming is well, what happens in 2024? What happens in a post Trump and Biden world? You know, that's the end as, as we see it. That's the end of, of a certain era of influence. Right. If you go by generation. So now what is what's what's the younger generation going to look like? Uh, what's a younger generation's Republican going to look like? Or what's a younger generation Gen Xers would be next? You know, what are their what are their Democrats and Republicans going to look like? Um, and that's almost unto itself a trick question, because what we're starting to see is the demise of the two party system um, from a number of from a number of angles. But the one that we're most familiar with is that we're starting to get into the generations now that were either born into a world that had the Internet when they showed up, so to speak, or those that have had a long, prolonged exposure to decentralization of information. So uh, the very narrow worldview on the left and the very narrow worldview on the right are under attack now from a sort of more centrist, cynical, I call it healthy cynicism, um, perspective that is the product of generations that grew up with access to a heck of a lot more information than than a lot of older generations ever had so that's going to have a, a really profound effect on you know does so, the democrat narrative and, and conservative narrative survive so in other words that that uh, the fact that they are waking up with this ubiquitous data access allows them to do more self-directed study or self-directed focus on the stuff that interests them rather than having the traditional peer uh, pillars of uh, the conservative worldview or liberal worldview pushed down their throat. They're actually being able to go in and do a selective buy on what they like and what they don't like based on their own personal interests. Yep, it's the decentralization of information, it's the decentralization of priorities, and it's certainly the decentralization well, of information. Maybe you flip that around, though, now it's saying there's less that we're unified about then. Because now everybody's pursuing their own desires. It, it is true. And that's going to have a profound effect on the survivability of both, you know, uh, the so-called, you know, the prodigal Democrat, and the prodigal Republican. Those worldviews we don't foresee. And we're starting to see the cracks of that show now. Uh, anybody that's been in, a, in a, a political forum that has a, a larger, younger generation component, let's say under 40, under 35, yeah. you will see a self-interest based, based healthy cynicism there that does not align with either side. So really well, what we're seeing, the reason we call this what it is, is this is this Trump and Biden are the end of that worldview, or right. nearly the end. Okay, that's kind of depressing. So let's switch on to number two and let's go into technocratic policing, where I think if we're, if I understand this right, this is a case of where person of interest meets minority report. Uh, something like this and sprinkle liberally with some Orwell. Um, you know, we're, we're, where we're at now, so for, for purposes of policing as we know it uh, to be today, certainly, in the, and, and by the way, I'll preface by saying that this is a product of a lot of the sustained civil unrest that we've seen, and that is the gloves are coming off. These Well, it's actually related to topic here. number one, right? I mean, so there's less that's unifying us, so the whole concept of living under a uniform rule of law kind of goes out the window so now it's kind of getting into everybody every man for themselves or every man and woman for themselves right um no it, it's true so what we're starting to see now so if to put it into perspective if 2010 to 2015 was the fintech boom 
uh, in, in big technology. So FinTech obviously stands for financial technology. So things like Robinhood and Acorn and, and systems like that that were supposed to take the, what we know to be banking and finance and we're supposed to make them something new and exciting. In a lot of instances, they did do that. Uh, 2020 and forward uh, for the foreseeable future is going to be the surveillance tech boom. Now, we know the NSA and DHS, they all have that functionality. Yep. They all have the ability to do that, right? But we're talking about now is smaller entities, i.e. municipal, state police departments, and in a lot of instances, private enforcement agencies uh, and small town police departments are going to want to access the kind of data that lets them be better at their job. And the notion of privacy is going right out the window because if you look at a lot of the damage and destruction that these, you know, a lot of the left wing protests have done, right? Wouldn't it be nice to just instantly catch them? <clears throat> well, depending upon how intrusive you would like to be, uh, you can do that. And so what we're seeing is this sort of boom in technocratic policing where you're seeing the use of new platforms, drones with facial recognition technology, drones with license plate recognition technology, where they're able going to, you know, a company like Palantir, for instance, is going to be able to take all this massive amounts of data and say, this person was in this place at this time and did this. And here's the proof, period, the end. No judge, jury, or lawyer required. Yeah, well, and that's looks like sort of we're, the ultimate end game. Looks like we're headed towards a post-constitution world. And, and, and this, I mean, you know my background's in engineering. And in engineering, the more information you have, the more you can control. And that's what's happening here. Now, the control is shifting from uh, we the people, if you will, to we the data owners. And because they have the information on how to push and identify what levers to push or pull. So... All right, that's another interesting topic that's not exactly leaving me warm and fuzzy going into the weekend here, but let's go on to topic number <laughs> topic number three. <laughs> uh, um, you well, know, I might brighten your day up a little bit. <laughs> no, I, anytime there's conflict between people, it's not exactly bright my day, but I got to admit, these these organizations, I, I, um, I, I kind of had a feeling that this kind of might be happening where you see this internal turmoil, kind of like back in... The Weimar Republic under, and when we were talking under Hitler, they, the uh, the socialists under Hitler were at, at at odds with the communists, and it sounds like we got some of the same stuff happening right now in America. Same concept, uh, different metrics, but actually a, a broadly historically accurate uh, parallel there that you just drew, and that is we want to, we want folks to kind of keep an eye on on this what we're going to call embryonic stage of a trend. It's not going to be evident. It's not going to be obvious. And I promise you, it's not something you're ever going to hear on the nightly news. Okay. Uh, you got to really kind of dig into social media forums. And you also have to really pay attention to a lot of these citizen journalists live streams to, to catch little sparks of, of what we've seen in terms of a broad based data linguistics trend, which is BLM, Black Lives Matters, and the priorities and, and principles that they have uh, as a racial equality and justice movement um, and Antifa, which is largely a ironically named anti-fascist, um, sort of a more of a Marxist classist movement, right? We're going to start to see conflict between those two groups. And the reason we're going to start to see conflict between these two groups is that BLM is starting to figure out that in even in instances where they have legitimate cause to be upset about something or to be protesting about something, they're watching their events get hijacked by middle class to upper middle class white college kids with a largely emotio irrational political agenda. Right now, they may pander to the racial component of BLM, but that's not really why they're there it's most of the time. You know, we're painting with broad brushes here because we're doing this nice and quick. But there are specific sub demographics that they are starting to figure out BLM that they're being used by these largely university or uh, well to do white kids. And I mean, as an example, they call um, in New York, uh, they call them trustafarians and a kind of an interesting, you know, synopsis of it is like, you know, you're talking about somebody that's antifa down with capitalism and, you know, down with the man. And meanwhile, mommy and daddy live up in Darien and make $10 million a year. BLM organizers, the hardcore BLM racial justice organizers are getting a little sick and tired of the condescending nature that often comes along with that movement. So we're going to start to see some conflict there. Uh, and it's not going to be isolated to just the left. We're not going to talk about it now, but there's, there, you see, you're seeing balkanizations on both sides. And that's what happens. And it goes right back to the first um, first component of this is that you're starting to see ex established worldviews 
start to implode as more information and availability and selectability of information becomes available. Oh, well, th thank you very much, Nick, for that briefing. As usual, it's very interesting when you actually get out of the mainstream media talking points and go in and actually look at the numbers about what's happening in our society. I want to thank you for your insights. If you're interested in additional data analysis of this sort, please be sure to contact evolutionconsulting.world. And remember to tune in to Let's Fix Stuff every single Friday uh, to get ahead of the news cycle and actually get your latest mission brief. Be sure to visit letsfixstuff.org for the latest news, data, humor, and solutions. And I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out all of our content at Let's Fix Stuff um, and in particular our YouTube channel and follow all the content we've got up there. The channel features videos like our Meet the Rocket Scientist series, um, which, and we also have rational data-driven solution podcasts and a heck of a lot more. And if you'd like to support our work and get special access to what we call classified data that nobody else has please consider joining our right stuff club for only 16 cents per day all right well thank you everybody thanks again and uh let's uh, go out and fix stuff shall we